All right. Um, welcome to the again, a presentation done by Crazy Physics, where we help to make you understand better. All right. You need to keep checking on YouTube for all our videos. And what you need to do is to type Crazy Physics in your YouTube search, and then you'll be able to get your things and the videos that you require. All right. Crazy Physics, this is Bishop again doing a presentation on you know one of our presentation here is Bishop and you can always reach us on zero seven eight zero seven one seven five zero seven. Um today we wanted to um uh electric circuits. We want to deal with electric circuits. This is one area where learners struggle a lot. Electric circuits. Basically, we're dealing with electricity. All right, electric circuits. We we're going to try to make it very, very simple for us to understand. Bring us up to speed again from grade 10, grade 11, and get into grade 12. My mission is to make sure that even a grade 10 learner or a grade 11 learner should be able to attempt grade 12 questions after watching this um, video. All right, since we're dealing with electric circuits, before we go into calculations, because here there's not much theory, is understanding the concept. We will be dealing with um, Ohm's law. I need to start with Ohm's law. All right? If we understand what Ohm's law is, then things become very, very easy for us. Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current, all right, really the, the current in a conductor the current in a conductor, you know what a conductor is, right? Anything that allows electricity to pass through, all right? Current in a conductor at any two points, we need to know this, at any two points is directly proportional. It's directly proportional to the potential difference. directly proportional to the potential difference um, at constant temperature. Remember, all physics laws must have a constant variable at constant, at constant temperature. At constant temperature. All right, that's our Ohm's law. This is either two or nothing. We need to know that. Now, mathematically, we're dealing with something like this. And if we introduce our proportionality constant, we have our proportionality constant as resistance, R being equals to V over I. We're going to talk about all these concepts just in a minute. R equals to V over I. All right. Now, if I want to draw a graph, because we said they are directly proportional, therefore, we could have a graph of V, potential difference, potential difference against current. And since, since we said uh, directly proportional, it means it must give us a straight line graph. Okay, now, for, for a straight line graph, the gradient of a straight line graph, which is our change in y over change in x, would simply be v over i. So that should give us the resistance. The resistance becomes the gradient or the slope of this type of graph. Okay, so this is one other way an examiner can put a question. So when we have a straight line graph, um, of potential difference versus current, it simply gives us our slope, and that slope is our resistance. Remember, constant temperature. Quickly, there are two types of conductors um, when we deal with electricity. Just to quickly mention that before we go ahead, there are two types of conductors. There is what you call an ohmic conductor, and there is what you call a non 
omic. All right. This one simply, what we're saying, it it obeys Ohm's law. Whereas this one does not obey. Does not obey Ohm's law. So the graph we have on top here is actually the graph of an ohmic conductor because Ohm's law is observed. All right. Now, having said that and laid that foundation, let's quickly talk about our variables, our current, potential difference, and, and resistance. Okay? Because these are the things we would mention over and over again as we go. All right, what is, what is current? What do we know? Let's talk about everything that has uh, that current deals with. Current, the symbol, the symbol of current is I, all right? It is measured, the units, it's measured in amperes, but we just simply write A, okay? What else do we know about current? Um, it is measured, it is measured with an ammeter. All right, it is measured with an ammeter which is always connected in series. We would see this series in parallel as we go on. All right, measured in series. And one thing we know about current, this is now one of the most important things that we need to know about current is that current is, um, current is divided current is divided in a series connection. Current is divided in a parallel, sorry, in a parallel connection. We will explain this uh, just later on, but this, we're just quickly writing everything we know about current. Um, by the way, by the way, another way to calculate current will be Q equals to IT, I delta T where this is time and this is our quantity of charge. Measured in columns. Elec this is electrostatics now. All right. Time is measured in what? In seconds. And I is simply our... So if, if, we, if we go further, we could actually say I is Q over delta T. And this is where the definition of current comes from. Um, the rate of flow of charges. Every time we mention, we use time to divide, it's always the rate. So it is the rate of flow of charges. All right, very, very important things we need to know about current. I'm sure we know what our ammeter uh, looks like. Let's go up there to where we talked about ammeter just now. Yes, an ammeter is represented, you know, like that. We would see uh, a quick diagram or a, a, a simulation that would help us with this. So this is, these are very important things to quickly know about current. Now, what about potential difference? We're going to do these definitions as we lay a foundation, potential difference. All right, that's current, potential difference. Already we mentioned the relationship between these two, that they are directly proportional, potential, potential difference. All right, potential difference, we're going to use the symbol V to represent that. Uh, it's measured in, in volts, again, V, all right, volt is all the voltmeter, the voltmeter used in measuring potential difference is always connected across. It's connected across, all right. We would say some very, very important things. Connected across here, across, um, and here it is important that I mention something here, all right? It's important that I mention something here um, 
there's a difference between okay let, let, let's talk about this EMF All right EMF is defined as the all right this is the maximum work done per unit charge all right it's the it's the maximum the maximum in grade 10 we say it's the maximum energy that a cell can deliver all right it's the maximum amount of energy that a cell can deliver it's the maximum amount of energy all right which can also be maximum work done remember work done and energy quite the same maximum work done per unit charge per unit charge there is a difference as we're going to see that between emf and uh, the terminal potential difference now the emf is also measured in volts and um, just like your potential potential difference we'll talk about emf just later on where after we mention the third variable which is our resistance all right and what is the definition of resistance from just the english word it's the opposition to the flow of current opposition to the flow opposition to the flow of current all right this is measured in ohms all right measured in ohms measured in ohms and i'm sure we know we know the symbol this is the omega sign measured in ohms all right now resistors can be connected both in series and in parallel we would see that as we go on okay now resistors here let's talk about resistors quickly this is where electricity actually rests on um, the resistance of a conductor can be affected by four things number one the type of material used the type of material will determine the resistivity the value of the resistance the type of material number two the length of the conductor this is grade 10 the length of the conductor would also determine the value of the resistance uh, here the longer the longer the conductor the greater the resistance because current will have to travel over a long distance the greater the resistance the greater the resistance so that's one of the things that affect resistance the value of our resistance uh, number one the type of material number two the length of the conductor number three the thickness of the conductor the thicker the thicker the conductor the smaller this is actually inversely proportional the smaller the resistance so the thicker the conductor the smaller the resistance that's the third one and uh, number four like I said this is just um, a preview from grade 10 temperature the higher the temperature of the conductor remember we talked about Ohm's law at constant temperature but what if temperature changes the resistance also changes the higher the temperature what's going to happen to our resistance and the greater the resistance so these are factors that affect resistance four of them the type of material the length of the conductor the thickness and then the temperature all right now we're still in resistance because this is this is where electricity rests on resistance can either be connected in series or in parallel let's try to see let, let's um, create a table as we compare 
series and parallel connections. All right. Um, your series connection, your series connection of resistors would look something like this. All right. We can call this R1, R2, and R3. While a parallel connection, I'm going to mention a word that will help us identify when we have a parallel connection. All right. Okay, let's have this. Um, since we're just starting, let's have this here before we have very hectic diagrams. And then we have that, that uh, again, we have R1, we have R2, and we have R3. All right, so these are your circuit diagrams. Now, there is what we call the effective resistance on a series. RT is R1 plus R2 plus R3. While here, it becomes the reciprocal. Okay. Now, the total resistance here in the series is always greater than that of our parallel connection. You can imagine if you have 1, 2, 3 here, this is going to give us 6, while this will give us 1 over 1, 1 over 2, and 1 over 3. We will do calculations just in a while, and then us to get these definitions out of the way. All right, so this is our series, and here is our parallel. Now, what we need to know is this. In a parallel connection, and this is a very good point, the total resistance, I'll show this in a calculation, is always smaller is always smaller than the smallest resistance all right always smaller than the smallest resistance what we mean is if we calculate our rt in a parallel it our value must be smaller than the smallest resistor. You can try that. Okay, for example, if you have R1 to be 1 ohms and R2 to be 2 ohms, okay, so 1 over RT will be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and that should be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2, all right? If you do that on a calculator, 1 over RT, remember 1 over RT here now, if you use your calculator, okay, we should have 2 there, and this should be 3 over 2. But this is not our final answer. We need to change this over. This is where the trick is. It's like you cross multiply and divide. So if RT goes up, this must also go up, 2 over 3. And if you use your calculator, you're going to get 0, 0,67 um, because it's 666 recurring. You see, our value here is smaller than the smallest resistor. That's one way to know whether you're on the right track or you're already getting things wrong. Okay, 0, 0.67 and that. Now, what is uh, the behavior of current in and, and uh, potential difference? I'm going to make this just very simple. I know we come from different backgrounds of learning but I'm going to make this very simple and crazy. Um, there's an acronym that we use with crazy physics. We say SAPD, all right, um, and paid. If you can understand this, this is just going to make our life very, very, very easy. SAPD, you know, South African Police Department, um, series. are potential dividers. Awesome stuff. So when you have a series connection, potential difference is divided. While here, parallel R, you remember I represents what? 
carrot dividers. This is beautiful. As a PD paid, you know, in class I normally say as a PD is paid, just to create a sentence. Series are potential dividers and parallel are current dividers. We're gonna prove this in a calculation um, after this introductory session. Because we're just gonna work with strictly examples. The more examples we work with, the better things are gonna look for us quickly. I wanna go back to EMF and internal resistance. Remember we talk about resistance as well, and then we talk about now we have internal. Already we defined EMF. Now internal resistance is written as small r. Internal resistance is written as small r. Uh, while our EMF, which is going to use this E to represent our EMF. Okay, now, since we, um, I'm going to try to explain what EMF is and what internal resistance would be. Let's look at this diagram. Let's have a simple circuit diagram, just a very simple one. Now your internal resistance is always in your battery. Remember what this is. We have an ammeter. We have an external. No matter how many resistors, we're just going to represent that with a single R there. Okay. Remember animated diagram current flows from the positive straight up back to the negative. Okay, we could have our voltmeter right here. I'm going to call this V1. And we could have another voltmeter here across. By the way, let, let's create, let's have, you know what that is? Let's have a switch. All right, this is a very, very simple circuit. If we understand what goes on here, all other things are just um, a variation of this. No matter how your resistors are connected, you can just put them together and have one. Now, if you notice here that this circuit is open, this is an open circuit. This circuit is open. So our I is equal to zero. We said our EMF is the maximum energy that a cell can deliver. So at the stage, we actually have no current flowing, so the resistors are actually doing no work. The value of the voltmeter reading here is going to be our EMF, because no work is actually done on this system. So the battery is not doing any work, the resistors are not doing anything, we actually having the maximum potential difference that the battery can deliver. So we call that our EMF. But immediately we close this circuit. Immediately we have this circuit closed. Current begins to flow. Now, your internal resistance, remember, will create an opposition to the flow of that current from the battery. Hence, work needs to be done to overcome, it's like friction, work needs to be done to overcome the internal resistance. So, to some extent, some current is lost here, some current is, will pass through here, which would make our EMF to actually decrease so when we close the circuit, current now begins to flow in the circuit. This resistor begins to work. And from our earlier definition of Ohm's law, we said R equals to V over I. So I'm using the small R because I'm dealing with my internal resistance. Now, if you check this resistor, I need you to get this. If you check this resistor and this resistor, they are connected in series. If they are connected in series, what happens? After this, I'm going to go to an animation. Um, 
the potential difference here and the potential difference here are not the same because they are divided. Series are potential dividers. So we can call these our VR. I'm going to change this name later. And then here we can say our R equals to V in R over I. This is capital R. Since these small resistance and the external resistance are connected in series, current remains the same. That's why we have I and I. I hope that makes sense to us. Now, if that makes sense, so we have I not changing. The same current flowing through here is the same current flowing through here. So what we're saying is this. An amount of work is done. Remember, E is the work. An amount of work is done right in this battery internally, which means this energy would actually reduce. I want you to picture, picture something here. I'm going to come back to this diagram. Picture something just to make us understand. OK. Um, all right. I, I, I love diagrams. And uh, okay, I've got a pregnant woman. Oh, very funny. I've got a pregnant woman who wants a chocolate bar. All right. This chocolate bar can actually give 15 kilojoules of energy. Now, when this woman eats this chocolate bar, there is a baby inside, which is our internal resistance. Okay, let's say the baby is not very greedy. This baby is going to take 0 0.5 kilojoules of energy away from the 15 kg that this woman gets. So, at the end of the day, the baby has 0 0.5, while the mother is going to have 14.5, because the 14.5 and the 0, 0.5 should give us the 15 kilojoules. I don't know if this makes sense. So in this case, this is going to be our EMF. It is the maximum energy that this chocolate bar can deliver. But when it is now eaten, it is divided into two, the internal one and this. So can we say that the mother actually loses the 0, 0.5? Hence, we, we can call it the lost voltage. While this is what the mother gets, we would call it the external external voltage. We've got EMF divided into two, lost and internal. From this, is it okay to now say that our EMF is equal to the lost volt plus our external external volt. This is very crucial. External volt. Lost volt plus external volt. All right. Let's go back to the diagram. That was just um, a crazy example there. So we've got our EMF. We've got our lost volt. All right. And then we've got our external here. Remember that V equals to IR. And since current is the same, I'm going to do this right now. And this is where we get our formula from. Lost volt from Ohm's law, V equals to IR. Let's write as V lost. This happens in our internal resistance. It's I multiplied by small r. While our external volt, some texts will call it the V load, is V external, and that is I multiplied by the big R because we're dealing with the external resistor. Here we're dealing with the internal. So our EMF will be the addition of both IR plus IR. All right? Now if, if we do a simple mathematics, what does that mean? Um, I, R, plus R. Now, if you notice here, this is still our voltage. This is I, and this is the total resistance, both internal and external. But this is what we deal with all the time. Very, very nice. I, I want us to try and let's check on an animation to help see if we can get these values. 
All right, let's try our animation. Got a program here. All right. Okay. Um, let's start by. Let's start by. Having that, let's have a wire. We're just going to try to create the same circuit right there. We have our cell. All right, in that cell, there's an internal resistance already. Let's create that. Okay. Um, okay, let's do this. Let's create that. We need another wire. And let's have a switch. All right. And then we need another wire here. OK. I'm going to need an armature for us to be able to measure the current. All right. We have an armature there. And then we have another wire. Just try to create the same thing again. We have a resistor there. We have another wire. We have a wire there. And then we have another wire. All right. OK. This is not flowing because there is no, um, the switch is still open. OK. I want us to check something quickly. Let's see the value of the voltage. All right. We have a 9 volt battery here. And what is the value of our internal resistance? Uh, let's use an internal resistance of uh, just picking a value. All right, could be anything. Let's have it as one or or zero comma five, whichever one. Not really particular about that. Okay, zero comma four five. Okay, I need us to keep these values showing. All right, we need to keep these values so that we we can see everything. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, let's see. Now we have our 10 ohms resistor here and that. Okay, we need a voltmeter. We need a voltmeter. We need a voltmeter to help us measure. Okay, uh, I'm doing it wrongly. Now, since there is no current flowing here because the circuit is open, our voltmeter actually measures 9 volts, and that should represent our EMF. All right. Now, let's see what happens if we close the circuit. Awesome. Look at what happens to our EMF. Our EMF has actually dropped. Let's have some things to mark here. Our EMF has actually dropped to what? 8,613. We will do calculations later on. 8,613. And look at the value of the current flow in here is 0, 0,86. Now, I need us to see something here. 8,613. Because a small amount has been taken. Now, 9 minus 8,6, uh, that should be about 0, 0,3. Let's check on the potential difference. You would see what will happen here. You see, it's 8,613 here. All right. It's still 8,61. So the potential difference in the external now is 8,61, which means something has been lost. An amount has been lost. So the amount lost at the 0, 4 is our lost volt, which is lost in the internal. I hope this makes sense. You see now that potential difference is divided. If I, if I break this up, 
I want to show us a few things here. And bring in another resistor here. Look at what has happened. 4,4. 4. Now, if you check the value here, so remember we started with 9 volts, all right? So what's going to happen here under 4,4. 4. Why? Because the 10 ohms, we have resistors of same value. So the potential difference has been divided. Next, what is the value of the total potential difference? Eight comma eight. Eight comma eight. That means in this case our lost volt is zero comma two volts. That is what is lost. And our current is zero comma four four. Check this. Our if our current is zero comma four four, our I is zero comma four four, and our internal resistance is zero comma four five. So if our R internal resistance is 0, 0,45 and our I, the current flowing through the system is 0, 0,44, get your calculators and let's calculate together what will be our lost volt. Remember our lost volt is V equals to IR. So all we need to do is multiply this I, which is 0, 0,44 and 0, 0,45. And what are we going to get 0, 0,198 which is your 0, 0,2 beautiful stuff absolutely beautiful so this is just um, a representation of what we've been talking about well we would come back again to this animation but i hope this makes sense that potential difference is divided and we see what the emf is now if we add the 8,8 and the 0, 0,2 that we got here actually 0, 0,198, we're actually going to get our EMF back, which is what, 9. And what is the EMF? If I open the circuit now, if I open the circuit, 9 volts, EMF. So when the circuit is not functional, the potential difference actually measures is measured from the, from the battery. But once we close the circuit, what happens? and current begins to flow, work needs to be done to overcome the internal resistance and that drops the value of the uh, potential difference available for the system to operate. Though the battery can deliver 9 volts, the battery is only delivering 8,8 .8 to the external circuit. While um, the 0, 0,2 is used by the battery to overcome resistance. Very, 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 very good stuff there. All right. Before we round up this session, I want to um, just finish some definitions for us. Things we need to know. All right. Since R equals to, okay, let's do this. Since V equals to IR, what is going to happen high can therefore be V over R, which already means that your I and R are inversely proportional. We need this information. When resistance increases, what happens? Current does what? Decreases. L let's confirm that. You remember when we had, um, if I remove this, okay, Look at the value of the current here, 0, 0,44. I want to increase the value of this resistance. Let's see what's going to happen to our, okay, just any value, 24, done. Look at what's happened to the current already. Can you see it's, look, I'm not even going to move this. If I reduce the resistance, can you see the value of the current? It's 0, 0,86 now, because now we said this is 0 and this is 10. But if I increase the value of the current at the resistance, can you see the value of the current? So they are inversely what? Proportional. So as current, 
as potential as uh, resistance increases, uh, current does what? Decreases. And just vice versa, if my resistance decreases, what happens to my current? It increases. We need this information when we start doing a few calculations. All right. All that said and done, but when my resistance um, increases, let's go, let's check something. Look at, I want you to notice the value of this potential difference. If I decrease, do you see that the value is also changing? It's, okay, now look at this. It's 0, um, 8,6, but if I increase the value, can you see that the value is also increasing directly proportional as the resistance increases? What happens to the potential difference? It also does what? Increase because current is now decreasing. All right, so that, that's very good for us to see there. So V and R are actually directly what? Proportional. Very good. Okay, a few things we'll mention um, before we deal with calculations. Already we mentioned the fact that when resistors are connected in series, uh, the total resistance in series, if we have the same value of resistance, is actually greater than in parallel. That's the first point I want to mention as we try to wrap this session up. The total resistance in parallel is always smaller than the smallest resistor. All right. uh, we also said that when Total external, every time you see the big R, total external resistance, inc um, if it increases, what happens to current? Current also does what? Decreases. And if current decreases, what happens to our lost volt? Our lost volt will also decrease. Remember, your lost volt is highly dependent on the current that is passing. So we're saying if current decreases, there is less work to be done by the internal resistor. So that's why the lost vote will also what? Decrease. All right. I want us to see something. I think we'll see that again in the next animation. Um, light bulbs that are connected in parallel actually shine brighter. This is very, very important. They shine brighter, all right, than if they are connected with the same resistance than in series. They shine brighter because the current in a parallel connection of resistors is higher. The current in a parallel, remember, parallel connection, RT parallel, would have a low resistance. So there is high current. The more the current, the brighter the bulbs would shine. All right. All right. I want us to see one other point here. Let's see something here. Um, very, very crucial. Current will always travel. Current always travels in the path of lowest resistance. In, in the path. In the path of the lowest resistance. It's just like you and me. Nobody wants to travel where there are thieves on the way. You know, Current will always travel in the path of the lowest resistance. Okay, let's try to play around with this um, animation to extend this point. Um, I'm going to remove this, and uh, let's see if we have a light bulb there. What's going to happen? Okay. All right, look at that light bulb there. Okay. Um, let me remove this as well, just for to shine brighter. Okay, look at this. Now, if I pick a wire and create a path for current. I want us to see what's going to happen. Look at this. The light bulb actually goes off because current no longer travels. There's, high resist there's a resistance of 10 ohms here. Meanwhile, in this path, there is actually no re little or no resistance. So current will travel through. This is what happens when you get electrocuted and the light bulbs just shake and goes off. Current will rather pass through you because you are of low resistance than um, 
to pass through a place where there's high resistance. All right, so that's this is very beautiful. This is very, very, very beautiful. Okay, so current will always travel in the path of low resistance. We're going to see that coming up as we as we go through calculations. That particular um, concept will show up a lot. All right. Almost done. The next few minutes we will be done with this session. All right, and then we go and start calculating. But this is very, very important. All right, current is always measured in kilowatt hour. Or oh, we'll talk about power just now. All right. So this is saying kilowatt hour. Uh, for example, one one kilowatt of current used in one hour. Good. Um, what other thing do we need to know? We talked about EMF. Um, we can also calculate EMF by saying E over Q. Remember Q from electrostatics, the charge, all right? And E is the amount of energy, all right? Amount of energy. Amount of energy per the column. Q is column. All right. Very important. Okay. Another one. So these are formulas that could come up in our calculation. V, our potential difference, is that we can have this here, where W and E are actually the same. Amount of work done per, per column. Every time you see per, it simply means your division line. All right, and power is the rate at which electrical energy, all right, rate at which electrical energy is converted. So remember rate here, and this is your energy, the rate of conversion of electrical energy. Okay, here our EMF is measured in volts, potential difference measured in volts, and, you know, finally, I normally say in class, what? is the unit of power and people respond as what but really i'm not asking a question i'm only saying it's a statement that what is the unit you know, just to make the class lively what is the unit of power um, it's a statement all right okay so having said this uh, i'm sure we are able to run through to run through this, um, I'll quickly put uh, something here for us to. All right, as we conclude this session, let, let's look at a flow diagram and see if we mention everything. I've got this in my note here. All right, okay, we started by defining Ohm's law. We said we have two types of conductors, ohmic and non ohmic. We said everything rests on resistance, opposition to the flow of charge. Okay, I'm going to need to clean this because I'm going to need just to scroll up and keep scrolling till we get to the end of this flow chart. Resistors can be connected in series and in parallel. Now, in a series connection, we talked about this. R T equals to R1 plus R2. We have the total effective resistance increases with that dish. The more you have resistors in series, the more the total resistance becomes. Adding resistors in series decreases current. You know, they are inversely proportional. Resist, uh, series resistors are potential dividers, SAPD. On the other hand, with parallel, adding resistors in parallel decreases. The more resistors you have in parallel, decreases the amount of resistors, uh, effective resistance. And um, with lower resistance, what happens to current? current increases. We know that parallel are current dividers. All right? Um, current is responsible for how bright a bulb will shine. So with, with lower resistance, you have, uh, and that's why if you're buying any appliance, you always buy an appliance with a very low resistance because you want power to be, you know, high there. All right? Current is the rate of flow of charge. Current is measured in amperes with an ammeter connected in series. Oh, here now, good. I was trying to explain some heating effect. Okay, 
this formula is very very crucial e equals to vi delta t all right where e is the heat energy we talked about energy a while ago or work e can be used interchangeably with work the work done can also come into that formula so either e or w vi delta t and all this here we would see how it works when we deal with a few calculations but that's but let's note that you need to go to your formula page and find those formulas so we can walk through all right here we have another one we talked about emf you remember how we we, we got this formula voltage all right we talked about that and here we talked about our potential difference we say we have the v lost um, loses voltage due to internal resistance when delivering when we open the current we measure emf but when the circuit is closed we have a lost volt emf is the energy supplied by a battery power column of charge moved through the battery remember the e over q all right terminal potential difference um, when no current is flowing the switch is open so the current flowing the potential difference outside and inside uh, in the whole circuit becomes the same if no current is flowing when our external increases current delivered decreases remember we talked about the increase and decrease v loss will also decrease and v load will increase we would come back when we do with calculations and to use these two points all right these two are, are used interchangeably we would use them to and you would get more understanding about um, that now the last point here okay before we go to work the examples is to look at electrical energy e remember this electrical energy now we have power is the rate at which work is done or energy is dissipated we said w or e can be used so e over delta t and these are the different formulas for power vi we v, vi squared r v squared over r w over delta t which is also e can you see that there e over delta t so e and w can be used interchangeably and these are power formulas all right we'll show you how we derive these formulas quickly before i round up and measured economically by kilowatt hour and cost is calculated by that all right if we say now power equals to iv our i equals to uh, okay let's start from v v equals to ir so it can be i multiplied by i multiplied by r which is i squared r you see that if power now equals to iv again and our not our v sorry our i what's our i our i is v over r v divided by r what would that be power will therefore be v over r multiplied by v and that is v squared so these are just um different derivation from a principal formula of v equals to ir and p equals to iv all right i haven't said all this i i you need to watch this video over and over again it will help us with the understanding of electricity whatever we're going to do now for the next session will be to run through i'm going to run through 10 to 20 calculations on electric circuits and it's going to make a whole lot of sense by the time we're done so expect about two or three more sessions on electric circuits and things will just be fine again it's a pleasure serving um it's bishop again signing out on behalf of i'm sure you know it by now crazy physics always check us on youtube crazy physics bishop 078071 i'm sure you've enjoyed this lesson give me a call to let me know how this lesson has helped you and what we can do to actually help you learn but I would love to read and hear from you. If you want to email, it's crazyphysics, crazyphysics at gmail.com. I'd love to read. I'd love to hear. Send me a WhatsApp message. Um, give me a video call. Whatever you can. Just get across to us and tell us how we can do the sessions to help you better. All right. This is me signing out. Peace.